Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna go over a try hack me room, which was really cool. And if you're interested in Wi-Fi pen testing or Wi-Fi hacking. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe and share. And we're gonna get into this and have some fun. If you guys know me, know a little bit about my background, Wi-Fi pen testing, Wi-Fi hacking is really how I got into this world of pen testing. So if you wanna follow along, just join, you know, try hack me. Go to the Wi-Fi Hacking 101. And I think this is really, really critical. And I'll show you, you know, show you some stuff that you need to need to know, need to have, and all that good stuff uh, as we go. So I did this, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. I thought it was pretty cool. So I just wanted to showcase this. All right, so you can go ahead and start your machine, but we don't have to start anything yet. We can just go over the different tasks. We're gonna go over this relatively quickly since I already did it, which was like I said, a uh, week ago, week and a half ago, or something like that. All right, so let's make this a little bigger. So the first task here is the basics, right? An intro to WPA. You know, we'll get into what is WPA. You have SSIDs, which is the network name. When you go to an airport, if you're at home, you say your network name is, you know, home network, and you'll see your network name there, right? So with that being said, we can have something called an ESSID, an SSID that may only apply to multiple access points. You know, usually you have this inside of a office, a company, you know, a bigger network, not just your own little Wi-Fi at home, right? So that's different. Then you have BSSID, which is your access point, the hardware MAC address. And the reason why you need to know this is when you do your attack, you need to know what you need to identify, right? Then you have WPS2 pre-shared key, or PSK. This is your Wi-Fi network that is connected by providing a pre-shared password to, you know, that's pretty much the same to anyone, right? So say, for example, your password is Wi-Fi password, or, you know, I love hockey, or whatever the case may be, you're going to give that to everyone that enters your house in order for them to get on your Wi-Fi network, right? So then you have uh, WPA2 EAP, which is enterprise, right? So this was give you a a network that authenticates you by providing a username and password, which was sent to a radius server. So say, for example, you're authenticating through Active Directory or some kind of authentication server. You have a username and password. So once your once your uh, account gets disabled, if you leave that company, you cannot you can no longer access that that access point or that network. Right. So in your enterprise like me personally at my house, I do have a radius server connected to my access points. So if, you know, obviously I have a guest AD user. So if someone comes over or all my devices that connect to my network, I have a username and password for them just for security sake and just more for best practices. And for me just to stay in that groove of setting that stuff up, it's easy to go get, you know, an access point, you know, if I'm using whatever Meraki or Ubiquity or whatever, and just set up a pre-shared key and just give that out to everyone. And it's easy, right? But I like to, you know, have it a little more enterprisey per se, right? Anyway, let's keep going. So what is a radio server? A radio server is a server that authenticates clients with not just using Wi-Fi, right? You know, like I said, we can use radius for a lot of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So the core of WPA2 authentication is a four-way handshake. So if you guys seen, I think it's probably the most popular video on my channel is how to crack WPA2 passwords. When I, you know, set up uh, AirCrack and, I, you know, AirCrack and you do, I I'll show you this in a minute. Or I'll show you the tools that I use, but then we have to capture a four-way handshake. We take that four-way handshake, put it into a keep a, a cap file or PCAP file, and then we go ahead and crack that, right, with uh, AirCrack and G. All right, so we keep going. Most, most home Wi-Fi uh, networks are only using WPA2 personal. And you can, you know, you can read all that stuff. So the older legacy stuff is WEP, right? So as we can see here, we can just come down and we can just start answering these questions and I'll answer them and I'll explain why I answered it the way I did. All right. So what kind of attack, uh, what attack, which, what type of attack on an encryption can you perform on WPA2 personal? So brute force, right? You can brute force that WPA2 handshake, the password, you can do a brute force attack. And that's what I did in my video. 
and you know i had the password in a word list and i cracked it just for for demonstration and demo purposes right but in the real world maybe you have a massive word list that you gathered from you know recent pen tests or recent engagements or just breaches on the internet or just different word lists that you that you found on or people gave you whatever however you got them right you can spray that at your pcap file and then your your gucci right so right here, can, can this method be used to attack WPA2 enterprise handshakes? No, they cannot, right? Because they don't use a encryption key. They use username and password. So you have to do something called a man in the middle or a evil twin attack. There's other attacks to attack WPA2 enterprise, right? So remember, this is the, you know, Wi-Fi hacking 101, very, very basic stuff. So what is the three letter abbreviation for the pre-shared key used in Wi-Fi security? It's PSK, which is pre-shared key. Okay. So what is the minimum, what's the minimum length of a WPA2 uh, personal password? It is eight characters, right? And I'm not sure if that actually shows us here. Let me see. I don't think so. Uh, let's uh, do, 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 do. I don't, but if you ever tried to set up your home router, or if you just look in the back of your router at home, if you know, you maybe you have something from Comcast or Verizon or Fios or AT&T or whoever, right? Spectrum, whatever ISP you use, if you're using their default credentials or their default Wi-Fi password, and usually it's on a sticker in the back of the router, guaranteed if it's using WPA2 personal, you're gonna have eight characters or more, right? Because minimum is eight. So test it for yourself, check it out. And if I'm wrong, put it in the comments. Let's hear it. Because I actually checked that just for my sake. And obviously, I don't use, I have two ISPs in my house. So I did check on one of them, which is, which was uh, exceeded eight characters. All right. So you've been watched capturing packets to attack, right? So using the Aircrack NG suite, Aircrack NG suite. So we can start attacking a Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi networks, right? This is the walkthrough attacking your uh, a network yourself, assuming that you have enabled monitor mode in your NIC. So obviously, I don't have a wireless card on this machine that we're on right now. Uh, but if you want to check out some more of how to enable monitor mode and all that stuff with a, you know, I, ha I have an Alpha adapter that I use and a Panda. And I did use uh, my alpha, I believe, on that video. So you can go ahead and check that video out. And uh, it's how to crack Wi-Fi passwords. Um, and it's pretty much, if you just sort my videos by like most viewed, it's my most viewed video. Okay, I know I know that that's that's the re pretty much the easy way, easiest way to capture it. All right, so the Aircrack NG Suite consists of all of these tools, right? So you can, you can check them out. You can test them out. Like I said, this is not, I'm not going to go ahead and go through this right now. And you can go ahead and go to aircrackng.ng or .org and you can check out how to install it. But if you're using Kali or Parrot or any kind of pen testing distro, it is installed by default. Okay. And then also like this one uses the rocku.txt and this is going to generate five random passwords from rock you and you know check it out and do your do your thing okay so now what we're going to do is answer the next set of questions right so if i guess i can open up a command shell let me just open up something here let me just see if i can do this and let me make this larger okay make this as large as possible so we can see both sides right so how do we put the interface wlan zero into monitor mode so if you do an air crack or airmon right airmon ng let's just do help right oh you have to run this as root sorry okay so now what we can do is you see start, stop, and check, right? So the next command here is start. 
So what we want to do is, say if we did IW config before I jumped the gun, we don't have any wireless adapters here, right? But if we did, I'll show you the command. So let's do airmon ng start and then wlan zero. Obviously, you know, one process found and you can go ahead and kill these processes, but we don't have any interfaces. Uh, we don't have any adapters to enable that interface, right? So we can see, we can, we can just go ahead and kill that with this command right here, check kill. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. But you guys get the gist. It's pretty simple. All right, so the next one here is when, the inter when a new interface, what is the new interface name likely to be after you enable monitor mode? So anytime you enable your WLAN zero or whatever, whatever interface name it is, it's usually going to be WLAN zero mon for monitor right right here. So it's pretty self-explanatory, right? And then if you have any other processes that are currently trying to use that adapter, what is the command to kill them? And obviously it just showed us in that command, right? Airmon ng check kill. And what tool from the Aircrack ng suite is used to create a capture? Airmon ng. Obviously I don't have a interface, but when watch that video that I uh, that I did about a year or so ago, and you'll see all these tools make sense, okay? <clears throat> so what flag do you use to set the BS, BSSID to monitor, right? You do dash dash BSID, right? Same thing if you wanna set a channel. If you wanna go ahead and set a channel, you do dash dash channel. It's pretty, and obviously if you have any questions, you can just do Air, air dump ng dash dash help or dash h and you can see all the options and switches there okay so then last thing here is how do you tell the how do you tell it to capture packets to a file dash w right so that's pretty much that so now let's see if we can get to action right let's let's do a little test for ourselves so we have this capture Right, so let's go ahead and let, let, let's see the next ones here. What is the flag used? Uh, no, what flag is do we use to specify a BSSID to attack? Dash B, right? So let's go ahead and open this. And let's see if we can just unzip this. Uh, unzip, extract here, that's fine. So we have this capture. Let's open that up. So then we have this ninja capture file so let's go ahead and come back over here just for a second and let's cd to downloads and then capture and then we have this ninja cap right here so let's go back to our our um our questions here so let's see if we can see them all at one time no there's okay so now what we want to do is what so let me go back for a second. Let's go back up here for a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to crack the password for this file, right? So the useful information, we have a BSSID and the SSID James Honor 8. So that's the, the network name and this is the BSSID that we need to crack, okay? So what we wanna do is we can use the rocku.txt uh, word list. So let's give it a go. So I want to go ahead and just do sudo aircrack aircrack ng and then remember we have to do dash b here. Let me copy this so I don't forget. Copy that. So we need to do a dash b in order for us to dash b and then we're going to paste this uh, paste it. Okay. And now we have to do we have to specify a word list, right? So that's dash W. So we need dash W. And then my word list is going to be user, whoops, user share word list rocku.txt. That's perfectly fine for me. And then let's come down here. And then how do you create a, the, in order for the used hash cat. So if you want to use HCC cap or HC cap X, you can do dash J. You can just do dash s help and you can see the options. 
all right? And then using the rockyou.txt word list, when you crack it, what's the password? So it's green eggs and ham, but we don't know that yet. So let's go ahead and finish our work here, okay? So now what are we gonna go ahead and try to crack? We're gonna go ahead and crack this capture file, copy that, paste that here, and hit enter. So of course we have all the information that we need to crack. This is all we need to do. And I teach this in my other video. So we'll give this a minute, boom, it's done. The password is here, green eggs and ham, right? So that is the password. I mean, this is the answer for this next question, okay? And what is the pat? Where is, oh, where is password cracking like to be faster? Your CPU or your GPU? Obviously, your graphical processor unit or your GPU would be a lot faster to crack your password. So that's the answer there. So that pretty much concludes this room today on Wi-Fi hacking 101. This is probably one of my favorite topics. I really like Wi-Fi stuff. So hopefully you guys find this informative. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got through the room and had some fun. So I'll see you guys in the next one and enjoy your day.